not all zealots were um, assassins. So there's a couple things that I was having trouble hearing when I first watched this. So what he actually says here is Simon trying to teach Matthew how to assassinate someone is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Welcome to The Snipe Life, where we look at creativity through the lens of Christianity. And today, we're talking about The Chosen, obviously. We talk about a lot of different stuff on this channel, Christian subjects, different things. We've actually got an Israel series coming up very soon, so make sure you're subscribed so you can check out that. But first, we're going to check out The Chosen, Season 3, Episode 6. A really good episode and packed full of stuff. But one of the most interesting characters that I want to talk about today is Simon the Zealot. So let's jump into this scene and all the other scenes that he's in and kind of talk through what's happening with Simon overall. Why is this what, what is he kind of going through and what has he been going through for the past season? He's been a part of the show now for over a season. He came in episode four, season two, when he was a strong zealot, right? He joined the group in episode five of season two. And since then, he's been a part of the group and he's been traveling with them and he's been doing all these things, but he's still struggling with his past, including some zealots that are physically coming after him. So let's talk about that. Thanks so much for that. If you need anything sharp and just leave it there. Tell me about the one you're sharpening. It's a dagger. Why don't you sharpen the kitchen knife? Or a utility knife? Or an axe? Dagger is a weapon, Nathaniel. You could turn my kippa into a weapon, Z. So here, <clears throat> Nathaniel has a really, really good point. If you come in contact with a CIA agent or a secret service agent, right, they're trained to hurt you in many ways, not just using a gun, not just using a knife. They could use anything to kill you, right? That's what we say That was, that was say in like super spy shows and stuff, right? I can kill you with my pinky. Like that's the understanding that they have about the zealot. The zealot has been trained from when they were a young kid to be, um, be a very aggressive, be very, um, you know, lethal in, in the way that they were. And so Nathaniel's saying, you don't need that dagger. Like, why do you need that extra, um, you know, backup when you could, you know, kill someone with, with my keepa, you know, which is the clothing that he's wearing. Why did you pick up a dagger? Or wait, keepa is the head headpiece. That's interesting that he says that actually. Utility knife. But an axe dagger is a weapon, Nathaniel. You could turn my kippa into a weapon, Z. Why did you pick up a dagger? I'm not sure I can trust you with information. Fine. Now, this is an interesting insight into the group. Remember... We've seen all of them pretty much interact. Now, Simon the Zealot went on mission with Matthew. So I would assume that he trusts Matthew, uh, like maybe a little bit more than everybody else because he spent way more time with Matthew, at least a month of his time just alone with Matthew. But that's not the case. And Nathaniel immediately calls over someone else. James. He calls over little James and sends him over to go and talk to Simon the Zealot. Because if you're riding, you pretend like nothing's happening, you stabilize yourself, and then sharp move forward, change, and then surprise them. <laughs> Simon trying to teach Matthew how to assassinate someone is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Don't be afraid, I'm going to show it now. Okay? Again, the dagger is sharpened. He puts it down on this little cloth. What's going on? Members of the order have tracked me to Capernaum. So instead of brushing off little James this time, he immediately talks about it and he opens up. I wonder what has happened between little James and Simon the Zealot off screen that would give him more trust in little James than Nathaniel. Again, these are some of the things that we don't really get because we can't spend every waking minute with the disciples. We have to go through three years in just a few more seasons, right? Um, so it is interesting, though, to see how he instantly reacts to little James and kind of accepts and walks with him here. Dangerous, man? Lethal. So he says lethal there. So tell Jesus. These men train a lifetime for one thing, to kill. Jesus cannot be involved. You don't solve problems with the dagger anymore, see? I will not put Jesus in danger. Let him decide that. He's doing what? He's buying an olive grove. Probably <laughs> right about 
now, actually. This is another weird thing in the episode where it seemed like they bought the Olive Grove like the day before because we saw it in the last episode. I have to go back and see the timing of this. Seems a little bit weird um, that they're saying that they're buying the Olive Grove now when we saw it in the last episode. It just makes time feel a little bit weird. Yeah. Judas and the women, they're there with him. What does he want with an olive grove? He's done with fishing. He wants to press olive oil. So Zebedee is done fishing. What do you care? And then here we look back, we hear that theme again. Da, 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 which is the theme for Simon the Zealot. It's the theme for the Zealots themselves. Um, and little James sees that he took the dagger and he is now gone from this, uh, from this scene here. And that's the end of that scene. Later on, we see another moment with him. As we go to the naming of this episode, which is Intensity, Intent City, which is a funny name, in my opinion. <laughs> really good name. And we see again Simon. We know instantly that it's Simon because we listen to that theme again. Now we see him here and he is making some sort of bag. We don't know if it's for him or for someone else, but I think this is an important part because um, it's showing us what he's doing with his hands and he's not sharpening a knife anymore. He's kind of switched his mindset. He's no longer in that warrior mindset. So something else is coming here. We're just seeing him sew basically. And then here we see as he encounters that same face that he's been seeing over and over and over again. We've seen since the beginning of the season, someone has been pursuing him. And then even last episode, we saw this face in the crowd before it disappeared, which got Simon the Zealot very scared. Because in a situation like that, an assassin could just s swerve in between the people in that crowd and instantly go for his target without anybody knowing that an assassination even happened. So he's worried about that a bit. But... Here, he sees the face close to him, and he's worried. And he disappears again. Mystery assassin. He's now on high alert, just looking around, waiting. <laughs> when I first watched this, I actually laughed so hard when he walked out of that tent. I was like, how did he get over there? <laughs> but again, it adds to this, like, he's moving so fast, he's going around, you can't, you can't follow him sort of mentality. And you can see on all of these zealots, the Sakati dagger is extremely prominent in their costume design. This, this dagger is reminiscent of a group called the Sikari, which are named after the dagger itself. And this is a group of zealots. Not all zealots were violent. Not all zealots were um, assassins. But there was this one particular group of, of zealots called the Sikari who are very violent, and they were assassins. They were one of the earliest groups of assassins, um, you know, in in the world basically like these groups that would, that would form here. Um, and so in the show, Simon was part of this, uh, Sakari group. There's another one behind him. He tries one more way out. So we can see here that his first instinct is to run. That's what he did in earlier episodes. He ran away from the people that were pursuing him, and he was able to get away during that time. But this time, there's no way out. So what does he do? Again, Dagger is very prominent in their costume design. Now, 
Now, we're going to come back to Gaius in a little bit, but let's jump forward and get back to Simon the Zealot. Now here, he touches his chest. This is kind of a way for him to pray, to focus. We don't hear what he says when he's praying, but he's obviously praying and trying to get guidance through this situation. What should he do? How should he, you know, go through this? And if this is his last moments on earth, I guess that's what he's praying about as well. I recognize you from the order. Mine will be the last face you see. I suppose you could kill me. But my rabbis will be the face that awaits me in heaven. That's so crazy to me. One thing that I've been thinking about a lot throughout The Chosen all, all the way is how much they actually understood fully that Jesus was the Messiah, that he was God. Like they, I don't think they had full understanding. And I think a lot of the disciples in The Chosen do have way more understanding than I would first give them credit for. Like Simon here, he says, if you did kill me, my rabbi's face would be the one that would greet me in heaven. And while he may have, have had that thought, I'm not sure that that would entirely be the case, but um, I do love the line there. Is that why you turned traitor? I joined the order to fight for the Messiah's coming. And he is here, brothers. So he says, I, I joined the... Um, the zealots to fight for the Messiah's coming because I thought that the Romans were going to be this big issue and I wanted to be part of the Messiah's army, right? That's what the Jews thought. But here he's saying like, but now I found the Messiah and I'm following him and things are a little bit different. Last night. Um, yeah. Looks like your tent is damaged. Right. Yes. Need a hand? I'm certain. Okay. That is a Roman soldier. Ta taxes are still collected. Yeah. Now, the zealot points out two things here. He says that is a Roman soldier and taxes are still being collected. What does taxes being collected mean with all of that? Taxes being collected means that there are tax collectors. Romans being here means that there are Romans here. These are the two biggest enemies for the zealots. These are the two biggest enemies for the Jews in general. And so... As we're about to see here, Simon the Zealot is now having a transformed view of what this actually looks like. That the kingdom is being built here, and it doesn't look like how they originally thought it was going to. Yes. And the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is no kingdom that I've ever been promised. Mm. He is not what we thought, brothers. I have bet my life on it. <laughs> I have given up the seeker and our way of life to f now follow the Christ. This is really important. So I have bet my life on it. It means I've made a decision. I knew what it meant to leave the order. And yet this is as, as important as it could possibly be. Don't you see my heart in this? That this is truly what I believe? And then on top of that, he opens up his cloak and he shows them not only does he not have his Sicari dagger anymore, but he doesn't even have the other dagger that he had earlier in this episode. So when he took it from that place, he must have put it somewhere else or left it with the other disciples or threw it in the river again. So he gave up even the dagger that he had as a backup. He doesn't have that anymore. So he was open to either being killed or to show them the truth of exactly who Jesus was. So this is a really confident Simon the Zealot, and we're seeing a transformation here. He's really giving up that Zealot part of his name and turning into the Simon that we know as the disciple. After I witnessed the healing of my brother,
So now we're going to skip to the end of the conversation that they have after Jesus' sermon here. Now we see a long period where Jesus actually speaks to, Please. to the, uh, the zealot directly. And he, he mentions, you know, things that would help Simon Z in his, his quest here, right? This moment here. Let's listen to that. As you see what is happening to those around you, as you see the lives being changed by repentance and salvation. So he's speaking directly about Simon the Zealot, right? As you see the lives that are being changed around you, as you see the change that is happening in Simon. Do not ignore the evidence of the kingdom of God. Woe to you if you do not receive it. So he spoke directly to him. Woe to you if you don't receive it, right? And then nearing the end of this conversation, after everything's over, we see this moment here. Do you understand now? <laughs> I understand very little of what I, what I heard. Even less of what I saw. The Messiah does not need our attackers. Maybe you've forgotten what the order stands for, but we haven't. Enough! Are you blind? This is not a traitor. Yeah. You could join me. I'll find my own path. But I will return to the order with the truth. Simon Zacharias. His death. <clears throat> so there's a couple things that I was having trouble hearing when I first watched this. So what he actually says here is, I will return to the order with the truth. Simon the, Z the Sicarius is dead. And so what he's saying is, I can see you're a totally different person. You are dead. And that word Sicarius comes back to the dagger, the Sicari dagger. The Sicari dagger is what is named, it is what the zealots are named after. So they are the Sicari zealots. But as people, they would be called the Sicarius. So the Sicarius, that's what Simon was, Simon the Sicarius or Simon the Zealot. It's kind of interchangeable there. Um, but yeah, I love Timothy's thought here. He says, Z still isn't safe in this scene. The Zealots still can kill him here. Jesus disarms them. And yeah, that's a really, really good point. Absolutely. He's still in danger until this moment here where he says, yeah, I'm going to go back and tell them that you're dead because you're obviously a completely different person. And I don't know everything that's going on here, but definitely there's been a big change in you. So Simon the Zealot, really interesting character. I love seeing his evolution here. You know, in season two, he's like, oh, let's go break them out of prison. Let's go break John out of prison. Let's go break Jesus out of prison. Like that was where his mind was at, was this kind of like, you know, adventurer that needed to use his strength and his weapons and, and attacking people um, and helping people to, you know, escape the law and overthrow the Romans and all of these things. And that was his mindset. Even, even earlier in the season, when Jesus says, um, you know, I'm going to bring you to go rescue these people, uh, Simon got really excited. And then he's like, not that type of rescue, Simon. And so he has to kind of gauge, um, not gauge, but he kind of has to um, temper Simon's, um, you know, gung ho -edness <laughs> into what he wants to do. And so now Simon is finally having this, this new identity of coming back into who he is. But, you know, one thing that I was thinking was really interesting is we actually know that they call Simon the Zealot Z forever. They always call him Z. And even in scriptures, obviously, we see him called Simon the Zealot. Um, and so it's interesting that they kept that moniker on him throughout all that time. And even in the chosen, we know that they call him Z, uh, even way, way, way down the line when Jesus is resurrected and everybody like the early church is happening. Cause we saw that during the Christmas special when Mary and Magdalene and mother Mary actually mentioned him as Z still even there. So, um, yeah, really interesting, but obviously he doesn't resonate with being a zealot anymore. So it's kind of a different, um, you know, meaning overall, but some of this out really interesting character. Glad we got these scenes because it helps us to, to kind of bring that whole story full circle. And we see as the zealots are now not going to be a problem for him going on in the future, at least not that we know of. Hey, if you like this short part of our live stream, you can check out the full five hour live stream over on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the snipe life. This is literally the best way that you can help to support our ministry. And it really means a ton to us. You can contact us anytime through the chat on there. And you too could be like these amazing, amazing people that just joined our Patreon over the last few weeks. Thank you so much to all you amazing, amazing people. And thank you for supporting our ministry and what God has asked us to do.